if you're using a conditional form with automation, you're going to need a pretty advanced automated process. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build using Zapier's pathing tool. Pathing allows you to create different paths for your automation depending on what answers or stimulus are received throughout the process. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, I'm Gareth Pronovost, the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your life. If that's of interest to you, definitely click subscribe to this channel and swing by our website and see how we might be able to help you. But without further ado, let's just jump into my screen and start talking about our example here. So quick rewind, you know, last week we did part one of this and that's where we built a conditional form using JotForm. So high level reminder, a conditional form will adjust depending on the answers that are presented in the form. So as you see here, our first question in this example is that we're asking how many different SKUs are you ordering on this form? And you could order up to three, one, two, or three SKUs. And you see that we've got, you know, item one with a quantity, item two with the quantity for that item, and then item three with a quantity for the third item. Now the conditional part of this form comes in our settings, just a quick reminder from what we were talking about. In, and that's where we set up rules that say, hey, if you say that you're looking for two SKUs, then we're gonna give you item one and item two. If you say you're looking for to order three SKUs, then you're gonna get all three of them, right? And so when we go to publish this, and let's go ahead and see what this form looks like, the form by default's only gonna show us that one item. So if you have any questions about this, definitely go back and look and see the different things that we built in our last video about conditional forms. But, you know, the way that we've built this is once we click two SKUs, now suddenly, we have the ability to put in item two with a quantity. Same thing with three. Here's item three with a quantity, right? So you could imagine that you did this infinitely, uh, you know, to whatever scale you need. I've only done it for three, up to three, for uh, the simplicity of this video, and also because Zapier's pathing is currently capped out at three different paths. There are plenty of workarounds for that. Again, though, the purpose is just to kind of showcase the capability here. So. When somebody submits an answer, let's say it was two SKUs, then they would put in the, the items they were looking for. Maybe they wanted to buy three stools and four tables, for example. Once they submitted this information, we now need to bring this into our Airtable database so that we can track it over time and make sure that we fulfill that order. So what's our database look like? Well, in this example, we have three different data sets or tables. We have the items that we sell, and these need to match verbatim to that jot form. So capitalization, spacing, anything like that needs to match. So stool, table, and chair are the exact same things that you'll find on the items over here. So that those that's our first table. Now that table links to our order detail, which is over here, and it also shows a total quantity ordered over time, which is just a simple rollup. Now the next table is our order table, and this is run by an auto number. So as another order is added to this, this auto number is gonna click up one more, and then this order ID is simply taking this auto number and adding 1,110 to it. That way we have a nice four digit auto number uh, off, the, off the bat, right? So our first auto number is 1111. You could make this whatever you want. And now this table is also going to link to the purchase order detail. So the order detail table is where we break it down and we say, these are the different items that were ordered on this order. So if you look at this bottom one here, you see that we have three different items, chair, stool, and table, and the quantities associated with them, 100, 200, 300, this is a big order, uh, that all connect to our most recent order. All right, so how do we build an automation that puts all of this information in here? Well, our items aren't gonna change every time, but we need to record a new order and we need to record the appropriate number of order details in line item detail here. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. So the first step, and again, this is a refresher from last week's video, but the first step is to get your catch hook set up. That is to say when somebody submits um, uh, the form entry, once that's done, this catch hook is gonna trigger and then the automation will occur. And then what we do is we add this to the uh, zap and this is called pathing 
And so we come down to the plus and we just click this plus and we add pathing. And we can only do that if it's the last step in our zap. So I can't actually add it here. You see that it's grayed out here, but previously it was available to me because it was the last thing. And really what we're doing is we're setting up three different paths. Depending on the answer to this first question, how many SKUs, depending on the answer to that, we're gonna go a different direction. So if SKU count is one, then we only need to create one order and one order detail. And so you'll see in here that we've got three steps and we'll go through those in just a moment. Alternatively, if this SKU count is two, then we need to create an order and then order detail one, order detail two. And so you'll notice that the number of steps is always one greater than the actions we need to take. So let's get into one of these paths and take a look at why that is. So going into path A, remember this is for the case where SKU count is one. Now the first thing we do is we rename this path. And so I went up here and just gave it a name, uh, or right here rather, and I said SKU count one. And then from there we need to set up our rules. And the rules are, or the rule in this case, is we need to make sure that the answer to the first question, let's find that first question, the how many question, it needs to be uh, aligned with whatever this filter is. So in this case, this filter is for skew count one. So we're saying, hey, when we only want this path to be the dominating path in the case where one was the answer to the first question. And so once that gets done, if we test that right now, you see that that's not the case on the most recent record. The most recent record has more SKUs, but that's fine. We can still set up our automation. Then we need to create the order ID. And so in here, we're actually creating uh, inside the uh, order requests table and in the, uh, the table called, let's see, it says it has an old name here, but it's the order table that we need to connect it to. And really what we need to do is just create a new record here. Now you'll notice though, in this particular case, we don't actually have any uh, thing that we're creating. Uh, we're not putting any data here. We just need to say, hey, there's a new record. And so when we click, if we were to click here manually, this would automatically assign the new record, you know, record number, uh, or rather order number 1123. And that's because this is a, um, a independent, or excuse me, a dependent field, which depends on the auto number itself. And so for the purposes of this, we don't actually need to write any data here. And so I've put an X in the auto number field, which it, it doesn't actually do anything, but it helps us to create that record. So in the case where you ever need to create an Airtable record, just write some uh, not something nonsensical to a dependent field and you'll have that record created automatically. If I didn't include this X, this automation would break. But now we've created the, uh, the, the order itself, right? So in this case, let's imagine we created a new order through automation. Now what we need to do is create the detail. And so over here, we're gonna do the same thing, except we say, hey, we need to actually create the detail where we bring in the answer to the first item question. And then we're going to link to the purchase order that we just created in step two. And it's most helpful if you link to the actual record ID. And then we're gonna bring in the quantity here. So that's how it looks for, you know, just the simple skew of one, right? But how do we get to skew of three? Well, let's flip to another path here. And in this case, we do this, it's the exact same idea, except that we have more details that we're creating, right? So here we're gonna say, well, we only wanna proceed in the case where skew count is three. We need to create the order, and then we need to create details one, two, and three. So there's a lot of work that goes into building this, but once it's done, now you're all set. So I can go ahead and hop out of here, make sure my zap is on, and let's go ahead and remove that record we just created and let's send through this test for ourselves. So right now our most recent order is 1112 and our uh, order detail is down here for 1112. So let's send this through and see how Zapier responds. So we see in a moment that Zapier has created the new order for us. So we had 1123, which I deleted. So Zapier knew that and counted up to 1124 or rather Airtable knew that. And then it went ahead and created the stool and table orders, both three and four that we just created. Now let's go ahead and, and submit a new order and test this out yet again. 
So let's suppose we have three SKUs and we go with uh, 30 tables, 20 chairs, and 10 stools. And let's just test this out and make sure that it works appropriately. Got to give Zapier just a minute to kind of think through its different steps. We can flip over to order. We see 1125 is being created. And here we go. Three different items were added. 30 tables, 20 chairs, 10 stools, just like we expected. So this is a really great way to take a conditional form and automate it through a variety of processes depending on your needs. Now, I'm sure that someone out there is going to point out that I could have done this also using uh, filters inside of my Zap, and that's absolutely true. There are other ways that I could have built this same automation, but the purpose of this video was to showcase the value of pathing inside of Zapier. So if you have a great strong use case for it, I hope that you found this to be helpful, and definitely let us know if we can be of any other service for you. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.